Hey guys, it's Janosch here. Today I want to show you how I use the Notion productivity software to plan out my online courses. I've been using Notion for about one and a half years, uh, or pretty much a year, I think. And it's been my favorite tool ever since I used it. I think it's the perfect tool for uh, managing your personal and work life. And uh, I've also been using it for planning out my online courses because uh, that's a very, very good use case as well. This is part of the Skillshare class I created on this topic. Uh, you can check that out through the link in the description. Um, you can sign up for a two month free trial for Skillshare right there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's get straight into this video and I'll show you exactly how I plan out my online courses using this tool. All right, so now we are in the Notion software and what I pretty much do for every one of my courses is I create this uh, page that has several sub pages in it. Um, that I then use to kind of organize my course. So uh, we'll start from the beginning. Uh, I have one page for my course structure. Uh, I have one page for uh, ideas for future improvements. These are things that I didn't implement in the first version of the course. Uh, perhaps someone uh, who was watching the course recommended to me. Um, things like this go on this list. And then I have the class resources guide, uh, which we'll go into later as well. So let's first of all check out the course structure. We'll click on this here. And this is pretty much how all of my online courses look. I use the Kanban board uh, view in Notion. So I create a Notion database and then use the Kanban board view um, to create this kind of course layout um, with uh, these columns representing one part of the course. Uh, I do this for the larger courses. If I have just one small course that has like five to 10 videos, I just create one column and that's it. Um, but usually uh, if I have bigger courses, this is what it will look like. Now, um, these individual blocks are individual pages, as you might know if you know something about Notion. And if you click on one of them, you'll find the detailed instructions for this video. Um, now, apologies in advance, uh, some of these uh, terms in here might uh, not sound familiar to you since I'm German, so I plan some of my videos in German, but uh, most of it is in English, so you should understand and I'll go through anything that might need some clarification. So what I do is I have a to-do section, I have a template set up for these uh, for the videos, I have a to-do section which covers all the things that I need to do for this video. So um, while I'm planning out these videos, I usually take some time to think about how I might do them, how I might, uh, things I might implement in the video. And then I write these things down here um, so that I don't forget when I'm editing the, the video and so on. Sometimes I have a, an editor that does my videos and my courses. So I have something called, it, it's called Schnittanweisung, but uh, um, what it means in English is pretty much information for the editor. So if I have an editor edit my videos, I usually include some kind of uh, instructions for them uh, so that they know how I want my video to be edited. Then I have the video structure. And this is pretty much just the uh, notes that I make for my videos. I have the all of these notes right here. And um, yeah, I just write down everything that I want to include in the video, um, then clarify things a bit and create this structure. One thing that's pretty interesting about these videos is the kind of status uh, system that I use. So what I usually do in the beginning is I have these videos set as, uh, I have the icon set as a red question mark. Uh, let me just search for that. Um, the right, yeah, there it is. So I have this question mark set up and then what I do is I change this to a check mark once I've actually planned out the whole video. Um, so in the beginning, all of these are check marks and then they turn into these uh, little green, uh, oh, sorry, in the, first of all, they're question marks and then they turn into check marks. And so I always know what videos I have planned already and what videos still need some work to be done. Now, you might be wondering, well, do I have to type out the same exact structure for every one of my videos? Do I have to uh, kind of set up the, the process all over uh, again for each of my videos? And no, you don't. Um, what I have done is I've created a, a template. Um, this is called basic video structure. 
and I can then add this in for any of my new videos. So uh, I just create a new video and let's call this test video. And then what I can do is just add in this structure. Um, I have improved this quite a bit since I last used this, but uh, pretty much this is what it does. Um, in the, my new version, it already assigns an icon as well, um, but then I have this basic structure in place. This is how I prevent myself from having to uh, create this structure for every one of my videos all over again. Um, just create a template once and that's it. All right, um, one more thing that I usually do is I have an ideas panel pretty much. So this is, uh, this usually includes all of my ideas that I ha have during my course planning process. What I do when I first plan out a course is take like a couple of days to a week um, to collect ideas and then I pretty much put in everything that I want to include maybe into this basic structure, uh, move things around a bit, clarify things. But when new ideas come up, I usually then include them in the ideas list. And this is something I usually go through during the creation process uh, over and over again, and then add all of these ideas into my actual course. I also have an editor instructions page in here. Uh, so this is uh, pretty much, these are the, the uh, global instructions. So these are things that I want to be applied to every one of my videos, while the editor instruction section in the individual videos uh, is just concerning that video. So I have these two levels of abstraction pretty much. Um, this is for all of my videos and then there's one for each individual individual video where I might want to have some special effects or some um, special editing um, or whatever. Now one more thing that I do is I create a, and if we go back you can see this, I create a resources page. And this is so helpful when you're creating online courses because it prevents you from having to have your own website uh, and so on. Because uh, what I do is I create this page where I include all of the additional resources, materials, links, uh, downloadables like PDFs or files, images um, for my students of this course. Um, I put it onto one page um, and I'll show you right here. And then I just make this publicly available. So I'll share the link to this page with my course students. And then they have this beautiful page where they can um, go through all of the resources uh, of, that I mentioned in the course. Uh, like for example, in this case, this is my Notion 101 course. Um, I have a couple of templates right here that I uh, was giving out to my students. I've got a couple of resources mentioned that I wasn't fully covering in my course. So I said, well, you can check out additional resources on that uh, in my resource guide. Uh, also a Notion sign up link and so on. So um, this is really helpful and all you have to do is just go to the share option and then you have to enable share to the web um, and this will make it possible for you to share this link with your students which then can access your course uh, materials uh, without you having to have your own website. All right, that's it already for this short introduction to my online course planning process. Again, if you want to learn more about this process, I have my Skillshare class linked down below. If you like this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I will be posting uh, additional Notion tutorials and video content on software tools, uh, web design and marketing shortly. So um, yeah, if you, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like and uh, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.